Assalamu alaikum. If you're new to my channel, I am Saika, a qualified alima, and today I'm going to discuss with you 10 Islamic habits which lead to success. By implementing these habits, we can achieve our goals and feel fulfilled. So whether you're a student, a professional, a business person, or a housewife, these habits are universal. They are for everyone. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us a dua. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana. Our Lord, give us hasana, give us success in this dunya and give us hasana, give us success in the hereafter. So we want to be successful in both worlds. And the success of this dunya, we want it to be a success which leads to the eternal success of the hereafter. Before we continue, I would like to say if you do like my content, then do like, subscribe and share as that motivates me to produce more content on Islamic teachings and development. So what is success? When it comes to worldly success, it's different for everyone. For someone, it might be high salary. For someone else, it might be to have a family. For someone, it might be to lose weight. For someone unhealthy, maybe they want good health. For students, it's academic achievement. We all have different goals and what is success, it's very personal. But we need to understand success is connected with our emotions. It's the emotion of feeling love, of feeling peaceful, of feeling content, feeling fulfilled. As for the success of the hereafter, it's the same for every Muslim. We want the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to be granted Jannah. We want to be in the company of Rasulullah. We want to chill out with the Sahaba. May Allah bless us with success in both worlds. So let's get straight into the 10 habits of success. So the first habit of success, it's a growth mindset. A research by a psychologist, Carol Dweck, I hope I'm pronouncing the surname right, suggests that there are two mindsets which influence the way people think about themselves and their abilities. These two mindsets are the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. Those with fixed mindset, they tend to think that things like intelligence, character, creativity, they are innate. You are born with them and you can't really change them. So when these people face challenges, they kind of easily give up because they believe they don't have those skills. Let me give you some phrases used by these people. This is too difficult. I can't do it. I'm not as good as others. So you know what? Why even try? I'm just gonna embarrass myself. I'd rather avoid this. And guess what? When they face critical feedback, they take it personally. Oh, this person, they just hate me. They're just jealous of me. They're just envious of me. Everything's personal. As for those who have a growth mindset, they believe they can grow by learning, by making effort, by believing in themselves. And whenever they fail, they learn from their failures. Their failures don't hold them back. You can't always be successful. We are going to face failures in life and we need to learn from these failures. So some of the phrases these people use, um, I'm not as good as someone else, but I can learn. This task, it's very difficult, it's challenging, but let me give it a try. If we look at the seed of Rasulullah وسلم, he had a growth mindset. He was continuously using different methods of preaching. Was he not ridiculed by Quraysh? Yes, he was. Did he not have embarrassing moments? These people really embarrassed him. Did he not feel upset? Of course he felt upset. But did he stop? No, he never stopped. He continued his work. The people of Quraysh, they said, we are better than him. You know, we have much better leaders. Why him? Did that stop Rasulullah? Of course not. He gave da'wah in Mecca for a long time. When they didn't believe, he started giving da'wah in the outskirts of Mecca. When they didn't believe, he started giving da'wah during the Hajj times. And finally, there were some people from Medina who believed. And then he became successful in Medina. But he didn't grow just because of his growth mindset. He was also very patient. So that takes me to habit number two, which is patience. In Surah Al-Kahf, when Musa salam finds out that Khidr, he is more knowledgeable than him, Musa salam wants to learn from Khidr. This is growth mindset. But what was the problem? Musa salam was impatient. 
So patience is very important when we are learning new skills, something new, because in those early phases, we are not going to understand. We are going to make mistakes. We are going to face failure. You don't become a professional immediately. And to learn in that early phase, you need patience. So for example, when I first started this YouTube channel, I had no idea how to do editing, what I'm learning even now. Until date, when I press that record button, I get nervous. So I know it's going to take me time to learn these skills, to actually be professional in these skills, and that takes patience. And guys, just because we're patient doesn't mean we're feeling good. You feel down. You know, when you're not good at something and you keep on trying, you feel down, you feel upset. And that leads me to habit number three. And that is emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence, it's actually self-awareness where you are able to understand your emotions and you know how to control them. And you are able to understand other's emotions and you can manage them. I won't go in details on emotional intelligence as I've done a whole video on that before. I'll leave a link somewhere up here. So do check out the video. That leads me to the fourth habit and that is spiritual intelligence. Spiritual intelligence helps us to understand our purpose. If I want success in something, what's the purpose? Why do I want to be successful in this thing? It's very important to understand our purpose, to answer the why. And I've also done a video on spiritual intelligence and I'll leave a link somewhere up for this video as well, so do check it out. And I'm gonna move on to the fifth habit, which is strengthen your willpower. In the Quran, those prophets who had very strong willpower, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them as ulul azm, strong determination. Now in life, not everyone is lucky that whatever they do, they'll become successful. A lot of us, we have to work really, really hard. And what drives us to work really hard it's our willpower. It's that strong determination. And willpower, it's not something that you can't improve. In fact, the month of Ramadan, it's that perfect month which helps us to improve our willpower. How? Because this month really trains us to control our nafs. So you know when we are controlling ourselves from not eating and drinking, which is always halal anyways, except for those certain times in Ramadan, that control of your nafs, it's willpower, so you're really strengthening your willpower in the month of Ramadan. We can also practice improving our willpower out of Ramadan by setting small, small goals for ourselves. So every time you make an effort to achieve that small goal, you're actually developing your willpower, you're actually improving it. So willpower can improve through practice and self-control. Habit number six, that is to believe in yourself and be confident. To believe in ourselves and to be confident, we need self-awareness. We need to know our strengths. So when I started this YouTube channel, literally I only started because I had confidence in only one skill that I had. And that one skill was I knew I had the knowledge and I knew I could produce good content. I had no other YouTube skill. I st I'm still learning. But that one skill which I recognized I had gave me the confidence to start a channel. It gave me the confidence to learn lots of other skills. So identify what are your strengths. Be proud of your strengths. They are a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Yusuf, Yusuf alayhi salam, he says to the king, hire me as a minister because I have the skills, I have the talent to be the minister. So you know when you know your talent, you know it's definitely from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you need to recognize that talent and demand the right position for that talent. And that is not ego. You know a lot of time people say, no, no, I don't have this skill. Oh, oh I don't have this talent. And the thing they're being humble, that is not humility. We need to know our strengths and we need to use them in a good way. And we need to know our weaknesses and we need to take those weaknesses as challenges and work on them. The seventh habit is enjoy the journey. So something interesting I read on Reddit recently, um, someone, they wrote that there was a certain goal they were working towards. And initial phases, you know, when they didn't achieve that goal initially, they said they felt disturbed. And, you know, it kind of affects your confidence as well. And then once they actually achieved their goal, then they felt anxious, like, what if I fail? And what's everyone going to say? And then afterwards, when they were confident, they've got what they wanted, then they said they felt this fear of losing it. 
person was actually trying to say enjoy the journey and you know when it comes to results always remember the results are not in our hand results are in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so just place your trust in him you know, in surah al-hadith Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says um, I'm gonna put in my own words so basically he says uh, if you if some sort of calamity strikes you don't grieve over it too much and if something good a blessing comes your way don't be too proud everything has been written down from before so basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, you know, trust in destiny, trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't grieve too much. Don't be too happy and proud. Enjoy the journey. Moving on to habit number eight. Very simple. Start your day with Fajr. If we start our day with Fajr, wallahi, we'll have a productive day, a very productive day. And end your day with the Isha. And after Isha, reflect over your day and Seek forgiveness for yourself, for your shortcomings, and forgive everyone else. So you know when we sleep at night with a pure heart, you know, you've done your toba because we all make mistakes and we've forgiven everyone else. And then when you wake up in the morning, you feel fresh, you know, because there's nothing filthy in your heart anymore. You know, it just feels so pure, so clean. You know, just like when you have a shower and you come out, you feel clean and fresh and energetic. This is how you feel in the morning then. Let's move on to... Habit number nine, intrinsic motivation. What is intrinsic motivation? Intrinsic motivation is when you are doing that action because you love that action itself, that activity itself. Whatever your goal is, you actually find that goal meaningful. You find it adds value to your life. It adds values to other people's life. If your focus is always on extrinsic rewards, for example, money or praises or I don't know, awards, then it's difficult to motivate yourself in the long run. Like we need internal motivation and we do need external rewards as well. See, in life, we do need both. We want that personal satisfaction. We want to be passionate about what we are doing and we do want external reward as well. But external rewards should never be the main priority because that will not encourage you in the long run. So intrinsic motivation really helps in the long term. And moving on to habit number 10. Follow the Quran and Sunnah. Follow the Quran and Sunnah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Imran, uh, Al ayah number 185, and whoever is removed from the hellfire and admitted to paradise, he indeed is successful he indeed is successful the life of this world is only a deceiving thing so remember whatever our goals in this dunya are our success is a pleasure for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's Jannah it's the reward of Jannah and we are only going to attain that through the Quran and Sunnah so don't abandon Quran and Sunnah because you have a lot of success in life you know sometimes when people they're making so much money they're like oh I don't have time for Salah or you know when they're blessed with children they love like, oh, my children they take all my time i just don't have time to you know recite the quran don't do that these are blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gave you success in this dunya but don't use the success of dunya to abandon the quran and sunnah because remember our purpose is to use the blessings the success of this dunya in a way that leads us to success in the hereafter so one time rasulullah he was with angel jibreel and angel jibreel looked up and he said there's an angel descending and since this angel has been created he's never come down so this angel came down and said to Rasulullah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent me to give you an offer if you want you can become a king prophet or a servant messenger. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa chose to be a servant messenger. What is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa teaching us? He's teaching us success. It's not to be a king and have a palace. You can be a servant and a messenger and be successful. Success, it comes from your character. Have an upright character and you will be successful in both words, inshallah. Don't just run after money. Those people who are rich are not exactly successful. We have leaders, they are so corrupt, you would not want to be in their position. People who are so famous and they're so immodest, you would not want to be in their position. So success, it's not always money and you know, all these properties and everything. The real success that you want, it has to come 
from good character. So always follow Quran Sunnah and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help me and all of you to be successful in both worlds. Take care. Assalamu alaikum.